What's going on guys, Bengal here, and before we start, I should address the elephant in the room, or should I say the lobster, because my head is really red. Yeah, got sunburnt at the Texas and Alabama game. Uh, great game, I could, I could talk about that game for uh, a while, but we're not going to do that, because it's Giants Season 1, off-season time, I'm live on Twitch, the chat, man, they they love that joke. They're they're a big fan. I, I can't show you guys the chat. I don't have the plugin enabled, but everyone is like, "Wow, that is that's one of the best jokes I've ever heard." And it, you'd be surprised that like everyone's on the same the same page with that. But like they're all for it. They're like, "Wow, that was that was really good." A lot of LMAOs and XDs and raffles and stuff. Anyway, Giants franchise uh, didn't make the playoffs. Finished four and thirteen. If you're uh, if you're first time on this channel, it's a great time to start actually picking up the franchise series. There's no better time to start. Well, other than like episode one and two and, and, and stuff. But the off season is a good part because you missed us going four and 13. It was terrible. It was not fun. Uh, my gameplay was not great. And the situations were not great either. So it was just a perfect storm of terrible and that was our season in 2021 but we're focusing our 2022 we're focusing on 2023 now and that is going to be through the draft that's through free agency and of course we're going to start with the season stats i do not want to see these but we gotta we gotta talk about it uh daniel jones just over 2,000 yards i mean Tyrod Taylor, similar spot too. Uh, nine touchdowns to 26 interceptions. Uh, that's 49 total for the mathematicians in chat. Uh, 17 touchdowns to Tyrod Taylor. His numbers were significantly better. It's actually pretty unbelievable. Yards per attempt was about the same, right? But, and he was sacked significantly less. But the passer rating, significantly better. And yards per game was about 70 higher and far more touchdowns as well. Uh, Saquon... I think we started to get him going, correct me if I'm wrong, we started to get him going later on in the year. He really didn't play at all in the final week, but on 354 attempts, had 1,400 yards and 18 touchdowns. He had a lot of attempts, so four yards per carry, I'm really not too bothered with that. Usually I look for above that, uh, but that'll do, that'll do, that's a decent number. Uh, and Saquon looked great, by the way, in real life against the Titans. Receiving. To get Kadarius Toney was the workhorse at the position. 114 catches, far more than even the second place tight end Jordan Akins with 60. Had 1,200 yards, six touchdowns, although Jordan Akins led our team in touchdowns. I don't think Kenny Galladay was that bad. He just wasn't super impactful. 55 catches for 800 yards. Obviously, you'd like to see the touchdown numbers go up significantly, but it is what it is. Uh, I think he was fine. It's tough to get a player like him involved, just speaking candidly. It is, because he's not someone that really is going to get open. He's not particularly fast. He's not a particularly great route runner. So he's going to make his money with the ball in the air, and he really didn't do that. So he had a couple nice catches, but you expect him to win the contested catch battle. That's his whole thing. On all Madden, it doesn't really happen like that. Um, Daniel Bellinger, like I saw a little bit from him. He was okay, but as much as I think he could end up being a good player in real life, in this franchise series, this a 69 overall tight end is not going to stop me from drafting a tight end if I think we can do better than Daniel Bellinger. And I think we, we could, especially with how often I involve the tight ends. It could be an important position to address. Tay Crowder! What a season, 122 tackles, 27 for loss, two sacks, and six interceptions. Absolutely body Derrick Henry in real life in week one as well. I know you guys saw that going around. He's not the fastest good tackler. He is a solid complimentary linebacker. Again, not enough to make me not draft a linebacker or sign a linebacker at some point. Big play Darnay. He got beat somewhat i wish we could actually see yards allowed because it doesn't even track catches allowed which is so dumb but he did have nine interceptions which was pretty incredible nearly double what our cb1 and dory jackson brought in i think five is a reasonable number the x-man xavier mckinney with four as well julian love brought in one 
three for Jared Wilson, who I thought was actually a really good player in limited time. I, I felt like he was in the backfield a lot, um, you know, making tackles for loss. I, I thought he just played really, really well for somebody that didn't see the field a whole lot. Three picks for him, three picks for Dane Belton too, one for Aziz Ojolari. And then obviously uh, didn't really put a ton of pressure on the quarterback. Eight and a half sacks for Kayvon Thibodeau was by far and away the most that we had. Four and a half for Aziz, three and a half for Aaron Robinson. Like the next highest is a corner and then another corner with Darnay Holmes. So I'd love to get more pressure on the quarterback. I really, really would. But those are our stats. If we look around the NFL, just to th see how things are doing, Tom Brady, of course, putting up pretty incredible numbers. 50 touchdowns as well. Probably going to win MVP here. Joe Burrow was also incredible. Threw only nine interceptions, which is like double what he threw in week one in real life. Patrick Mahomes, very good season as well. I mean, the quarterbacks... They're going to do what they do. In Madden Sim, they put up really big numbers. It's since been adjusted. I don't know if that's going to be in Season 2. I mean, I'm assuming it would be, but I guess I don't know for sure. Um, but as you can see, so many quarterbacks, well over 4,500 yards and many around that 5,000-yard plus mark. Uh, Derrick Henry, 6 yards per carry, 15 touchdowns. And 2,153 yards. That is a new NFL record. Jonathan Taylor is quite good. Zeke had 24 touchdowns, which would have led the league. Saquon, though, in that top group. Love to see it. Receiving Cooper Cup over 2,000 yards, 16 touchdowns. Tyler Boyd, very productive as well. Travis Kelsey, unbelievable season. Michael Thomas is back. Stefan Diggs, only four touchdowns, but a very productive season nonetheless. See a lot of different receivers in here with how, you know, this was a pass-happy league, which is not exactly a shock to see. Foye Aluakun uh, with 155 tackles, 5 for loss. Tay Crowder led the NFL in tackles for loss with 27. Very, very good numbers. Quarterback sacks, 19.5 for Aaron Donald. We've seen crazier numbers before, but a couple of very productive players. Darnay Holmes led the league in interceptions. Could potentially put him in place for DB of the year. He did allow a lot of catches, for sure, but does the game even know that? I don't think so. When you check out the Pro Bowl roster, some of the familiar suspects that you'd expect. However, Saquon Barkley makes it as halfback three in the NFC. So we have one Pro Bowler. Wide receiver, Kadarius Tony sneaks in at wide receiver six. We have two. Scrolling down the list, don't expect to see any on the offensive line, and we don't. That is Demarcus Lawrence, not Dexter Lawrence. So, still at two. Uh, Tay Crowder sneaks in as MLB two, which I feel like he could have been MLB one with the season he had. But our third pro bowler, big play Darnay, is CB1, another pro bowler, and that would be it. But I don't think that's bad. On a 4-13 and 13 team, when you match your win total to the number of pro bowlers that you have, I don't even know if that's good or bad. It's just bizarre. It's just bizarre. Super Bowl 57. I think it's the matchup I predicted last season. Chiefs and Packers. Yearly awards. Tom Brady does win MVP. No Giants in there. Coach of the year is Nick Sirianni of the 12-5 and 5 Eagles. We want to change that. We want to change that. Gene Dangus, yeah, obviously not in contention for that. AFC Offensive Player of the Year is Tyler Boyd. He did have a great year, although I probably would have given it to Derrick Henry, who had over 2,100 rushing yards. That's just me. Defensive Player of the Year is Khalil Mack in the AFC. And then, I mean, Offensive Rookie of the Year, Brees Hall. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Devin Lloyd. And it is time for the NFC. Christian McCaffrey wins Offensive Player of the Year. Saquon at number eight. Defensive Player of the Year is Darnay Holmes with Tay Crowder at two. Yeah, that's, that's something, huh? <laughs> offensive Rookie of the Year is Drake London. We have Daniel Bellinger at number eight. No Wandale Robinson. And Defensive Rookie of the Year is Lewis Seen with Kayvon Thibodeau at number three. 
Dane Belton and Micah McFadden in the top 10 as well. So that's, that's very interesting. Darnay Holmes could get some big points here. But the winner of Super Bowl 57 is the Kansas City Chiefs, and it wasn't even close. 49-24, Rashad Fenton was the Super Bowl MVP. And man, the fact that Darnay Holmes, I get, you know, nine interceptions, but he was defensive player of the year. You know, makes you wonder, makes you wonder how, how Trayvon Diggs didn't win it last year. I just don't get it. I just don't get it. <laughs> Darnay Holmes with three skill points though. And it's superstar development. That is big. NFL interceptions leader, DB of the year, Defensive Player of the Year, plus Super Star Development. That is absolutely huge. Now, what do we upgrade for Darnay? I think we have to get that zone coverage closer to the 80s. So I might just go zone, 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 and try to make him a bit more well-rounded. Plus three, I like that a lot. He eventually is going to be my slot corner, though, probably. Plus two there. So that's up to 80 with the plus three. So it's not quite that high. Uh, I think I will go zone again, though. That boosts him to an 81 overall. Plus one speed as well, by the way. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, it still is obviously undersized. But with his season last year, I really can't complain. He's doing quite well. We have finally made it to staff week franchise staff offense was disappointing defense was disappointing and you know i think i want to go ahead and change up our system i don't like the three four and i don't like thomas quinn as a result you're fired goodbye thomas quinn and we are now in search of a new defensive coordinator. A lot of head coach candidates. Um, now, these guys don't have any traits currently, but they do come with a hiring bonus of staff points, which is very nice. And let's see, Sammy Rios, 4-3. That's kind of what I'm looking for at the moment. Brian Dayball! Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, because he's not here, because I'm here. Robert Sala is actually decent. I guess the Jets fired Robert Sala. He wants to be a head coach, though. I think we're going to go ahead and give Sammy Rios a shot. 4-3. He will be hired. Welcome to the Giants, Sammy Rios. We now have 145 staff points. Uh, I do want to get that X-Factor powered up in case we ever get an X-Factor player. And I think for the time being, we're going to hold on to these points. Maybe spend it in player personnel. Yeah. 2% up to 4% trade discount for CPU draft picks. More value for our draft picks. Guaranteed trade package for current user pick during the draft. Non-X Factor players will be valued one dev trade higher than actual in trades. We're getting the discounts here. We are, we are getting it all. Reduce the cost of trading up during the draft would be big. Unfortunately, we cannot afford that at the time being. So that's okay. But uh, Sammy Rios, not too bad. And he does he does change our defense to a 4-3, which I think just fits the personnel a lot better. Saquon Barkley, by the way, is back up to superstar development. Big things. It's like they saw Saquon in real life in week one and said, all right, he's back. Saquon Barkley, star dev. No other changes. Defensively, Kayvon Thibodeau, we know, superstar. But oh my goodness, this is development I did not expect. Adoree Jackson is up to superstar development. That is actually a huge change. 27 years old, so he was someone that was going to be, you know, on the uh, 
on the bubble potentially with his age. If I said star, by the way, obviously I meant superstar. Um, but that's big, especially for an older player. That is very big. No other changes as far as I can see, but that is, that's very big for our future. Also, nearly 6,000 live viewers. I appreciate you guys for being in here. And I think we'll go ahead and advance to re-sign players. Uh, I approach this a little bit differently than I would in an actual rebuild. When we're playing every single game and we're actually, we're, we're building uh, a franchise up realistically, 82 and a half million in, in available salary cap, by the way, as our third mock drafts available. I, I approach re-signing players a little bit differently because, you know, some of the random guys just, they matter more. Uh, that being said, though, at certain positions of depth, like wide receiver, for example, um, where like we have some guys who could end up playing a similar role to Colin Johnson. He's not interested. I'm probably not going to go after him, especially if we might draft a receiver. Cam Brown, team captain in real life. Now, that being said, uh, not super interested in Cam Brown. Uh, I wish I could see his actual ratings. I think there should be a way to do that on player card. It's only 25. He, what does he do well? What can I talk up here? He, he exists. I, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, he has no interest in re-signing. And here are some big ones. Darius Slayton. I don't know about you guys. Darius Slayton was actually pretty good for us. I thought he was pretty impactful. And he's not really asking for a ton of money. Or is this the offer I last submitted? So, oh, in order for him to sign, he wants upwards of 6 mil per year. I like him, but I don't like him that much. I thought he played well. But I think we're probably going to look to go a different direction, especially with his re-sign interest as basically none. Julian Love is another player that just really isn't interested in signing back. Richie James, same deal. Nobody really wants to return, <laughs> which is so sad, except for Daniel Jones. Wow. All right. Uh, okay. That's something, I guess. Who's in here? Like Jalen Holmes, Justin Ellis. Nick Gates. Nick Gates I might look to negotiate with. He wants to be a giant a little bit. I don't really want to pay him too much, but this is a reasonable deal. I'll offer him that. He wants to play for a new team? Well, newsflash, Nick Gates. You're not going to be playing anywhere else. You can sign somewhere, though. Ricky Seals Jones doesn't want to come back. But what about Daniel Jones? 26 years old, has the bridge quarterback tag. We do have Tyrod Taylor on the roster already. Is there a reason to bring back Danny Dimes? Coming off an all-time bad season. <laughs> uh, no, we're going to go ahead and uh, give Daniel Jones a fresh start. We're going to say, hey, we appreciate everything you've done for us. Wow. But uh, we're going to go a different direction. Ricky Seals-Jones just isn't worth it. But Jamie Gill and I would have interest in. The Scottish Hammer. I would give him a three-year extension, maybe. I can't actually commit to that. Because if I draft a punter, I don't really want to be on the hook for paying Jamie Gillen. Let's go ahead and take this bonus down and offer him $1 million with a $200,000 signing bonus. And Jamie Gillen also wants to play for a new team next year. I'll I'll draft him. I'll franchise tag you. No, I'm not going to do that. O'Shane Zimenez. Dude, nobody wants to come back. It's tough. We have to have somebody. O'Shane Zimenez, I think, would be a fine backup. I'll give him a little bit more money. And he's going to test out free agency as well. Yeah, this is going great. Jordan Akins. What do you want, Jordan? Too much. Too much to be Jordan Akins. I, I think that's plain and simple. John Feliciano is here. If I lose both of my starting centers, because we alternated, that would be kind of tough. I need to have depth in case somebody gets injured. 
I don't want to pay him so much, though. I would give him a two-year deal. He doesn't want to be a giant anymore, which is kind of tough. He's going to test out free agency as well. So, all right. Jared Wilson played well. This is a reasonable contract. Two years to be a, uh, a backup. And we finally got somebody. Jared Wilson is back in New York, or East Rutherford, New Jersey. Jared Wilson returns. He played well. I think he deserved an extension. But the rest of these players, they're not interested. And I'm not interested. So... Uh, I actually, had, I had planned on bringing more players back, but it's clear that these guys just don't want to be here, and they're not good enough to the point of where we can't lose out on them. Julian Love is actually not too expensive. I would give him, I would give him two years. Cap hit would go as high as four mil, which isn't bad. And Julian Love is back as well. I, you know, I think that was a big signing to bring back uh, because if he has to start, okay, that's fine. But we could also still do better than him and he'd be a fine backup. Two-year contract, we have depth there at least. Matt Breida didn't really play a whole lot and is asking for too much for what his role would be. So I think we're going to go ahead and avoid him. And that's just what we're going to do here with, with our re-signings. Now, Mock Draft 3. Mock Draft 3. Oh, things have changed. Dalton Stallings looking to stay in Washington. The Washington State inside linebacker is projected to go number one overall to the Seattle Seahawks. Ed Griffin, edge rusher out of Tulane, projected to go at number two. So he's moved up quite a bit. You see, his, he's got a round one projection. And he's at number two. Up 11 spots. Daniel Brinkley is down two and is projected to go to your New York Giants at number three overall. I have my concerns with him. I've talked about it a lot. Uh, I really do. He's 23 years old already. And he's just an okay athlete with solid to good speed. Um, I, I would say my main concerns is just he's a little old. And when he comes up to the end of his contract, he's already going to be near that age of regression. I, he's going to be the highest overall player in this class. That's the thing. Like, we know that. We know that. But we have to say, is that the most valuable thing? Which you think it would be, but this isn't a rebuild. We're playing with this guy. Could potentially be a safety. Um, does have C block shedding, A tackle, A to C hit power. Like, definitely good. Will be the best player in the draft. Just will be. But um, we'll have to see what happens with that. The Dolphins with two top six picks because the Dolphins were not stripped of their second first in this because we started the franchise before that happened. Um, or at least, uh, did we? Uh, maybe it just wasn't adjusted at this time. Either way, they have two top six picks. Going with a Georgia defensive tackle and maybe the quarterback. Keeping him in Miami, Edward Sloan. The quarterback, Cody Bailey, is up 14 spots. Projected to be a top 10 pick. Vikings still projected to get Mike Parrish. Sean Hawthorne is actually up a ton. Now, for some reason, we can't see anything there. But, um, oh, because he's gone. Now it's, I don't know what just happened. I don't know what just happened. All right, there we go. Uh, he's a better athlete than Daniel Brinkley, in my opinion. And the coverage really shouldn't be that worse. So A, man in zone, is going to be like anywhere from 80 to 83, probably at the high end. B zone coverage will be high 70s. So it really isn't much worse. And he is a better athlete, which is more important to me when you're actually playing the games. It's something to think about. Uh, I am going to look down the board here a little bit to see what this movement is like. Dontrell Cobb is down three spots. He's someone I'm targeting. Not going to lie to you guys. Nick Duvall, someone I'm also targeting down to 27 projected. 
the tight end out of Stanford. We have another first round pick. They project us to take Will Stewart out of Georgia. Not sure that's going to happen. 2022 retirements. Well, Emmanuel Sanders just retired in real life. The ex-giant Linval Joseph. Deshaun Jackson. That's a name I could never see again and be happy about it. But Aaron Rodgers has officially retired. And Dominican Sue, back with the Lions, has retired as well. Joe Flacco's gone. Trent Williams and Jason Kelsey, two of their are two of the best offensive linemen at their respective positions in the NFL have retired. Brandon Graham, the Eagles are getting significantly worse. The ex-giant JPP has retired. Rodney Hudson, AJ Green, Hook'em Horns, Texas legend Colt McCoy. Julio has retired. Oh my goodness. Some big names in here will not be a part of the NFL anymore. Jimmy Graham in there as well. Gerald McCoy, the ex-giant Nate Solder, the ex-giant Prince of Mucamara, and after being the worst team in the NFL, <laughs> Pete Carroll has hung up the cleats, or the clipboard, and he's retired as well. And combine results are in. The biggest one that everyone wants to see is cornerback Daniel Brinkley. And he ran a 4-4-1. Okay. That changes things. That changes things. That's pretty quick. He ends up being good speed instead of solid. So that could end up being like 92-93. Elite change of direction. He ends up with good speed. That changes. That changes things. It really does. Because that that's an athlete. What was his vertical? Was it good? Or was it bad? 39-2. Jeez. That's pretty good. <laughs> All right. Daniel Brinkley. Maybe back in play a little bit. See Edward Sloan. He is a scrambler archetype. Ends up with great throw power. Ran 474. Hmm. Everyone's talking about injury, but I think it's always going to be DF injury. Um for quarterbacks. James Shaw should have an absolute cannon. Does he actually have elite throw power? He does. Very slow though. Ran over five. Cody Bailey. This one's interesting. Ends up with great throw power. And 473 speed. Uh, a lot to consider. A lot to consider. And it makes you wonder what's more important a potential franchise quarterback or a third corner? It's tough. It's a, it's a tough thing. What's going on at wide receiver here? We know a little bit more about these guys now. Mike Parrish ran 4-2-9, and it's the fourth fastest time. Okay. What about Larry Smith? He was another elite speed guy, or potential elite speed guy. He is elite speed. He ran 4-2-7. Hmm. All right. We, there, okay. There are some things at play here. There are some things at play. Who else ran fast? I want to know who else ran fast. I wish I could sort it somehow. But I think I just have to look in deep threat. And I think that's going to be the way to find it. Are any playmakers going to be like 4-2 speed? I think unlikely, right? Yeah, I'll tell you guys right now, there's there's a 0% chance I traded Dory Jackson. I like to keep things um, a little bit more realistic. And there's, there's just no chance I would trade 
a Dory Jackson to uh, to trade up for a different corner. It's just not it's not like that. Uh, Max Hill, by the way, is the fastest receiver in the draft, but elite acceleration and speed is the same combination that Larry Smith, the South Florida receiver, had. But here's the difference: Max Hill is a projected UDFA. So, that could be really good value down the board. Tight end. This is what I'm really interested in. Nick Duvall ran 4.52, elite speed. That's a really, really good time for someone that's 6'4, 240. Now, Chris Kennard, I was going to show this to you guys. Um, he had a draft story. I, I can still do it. He is apparently very injury prone. Ends up with just great speed. Ran 464, which is still good. F injury, though. F injury is uh, concerning. When you go to the news here, let's look at it. Drafts. So, I showed a lot of this at the end of the last video. Chris Kennard, widely regarded as one of the top tight ends in the upcoming draft, but a potentially degenerative knee condition has teams concerned about his long-term health. That's not good. The Oklahoma edge rusher Avery Atkinson, training injury, pulled out of the combine, said, hey, Goodell, not doing it. And then right tackle Alani Pierman, um, not a clean bill of health. But Kennard, yeah, I mean, it's concerning. Here, here's my, here's my problem with that. Right, is um, you expect like Nick Duvall to probably have a better development trait. You do. The reason why Kennard flew down the board with that big injury, like. He could end up having just normal development. Like, even if he had, I, I think the way the system works, even if he had, like, let's say, superstar development, I think when that story hits a player, I think it knocks them down. So even if he, he was at the top of the board, had a great dev trade at tight end, he he could end up having normal now. Like, that's, that's a, a real thing. So... And he could have had normal the entire time. Looks like a good player. Maybe it's just good value down the board. That's that's another thing to keep in mind. Maybe it's just good value down the board because the player looks pretty good. What else do I want to look at here? Uh, some of the some of the ends were pretty athletic. Four six five forty is a uh, pretty awesome. But overall, I didn't think the class was super athletic. I really was a little bit disappointed. Lonnie McDowell is one that stood out to me with A. Finesse moves, ran 4.93 with elite jumping. Hmm. Lonnie McDowell is uh, is not bad in there. Left outside linebacker. A lot of these guys I was super interested in. David Crawford, I said, could end up being a focus player for us. 22 years old. Uh, pass coverage outside linebacker. Ended up running 4.6 flat, with, which is elite speed for an outside linebacker. It changes that inside linebacker. Does have elite agility and elite change of direction, though. Like, that's a pretty good player. Also, if you guys are on stream and you're a subscriber and you're getting ads, refresh and you won't get ads anymore. Shane Flaherty ran 4.62. Hold, hold on a second. See, okay, this is something to keep in mind as well. Elite acceleration, elite agility, elite change of direction. He ran 4.62 with good speed. Now, what it says there is more important than the actual 40 time. That's something something to keep in mind. Because David Crawford, with elite speed, even though he only ran 4.60, two one hundredths of a second faster, right? He has elite speed compared to good. It's going to be a huge difference. It's going to be a huge difference. So you have to take what it says, not the 40 time, in my, in my opinion, from my experience. Akil Edmonds, elite speed, 
elite change of direction. Ran three or four projection, ran four, five, nine. I like that. These outside linebackers, man, look pretty good. Middle linebacker, I've said for a while now, Dontrell Cobb was somebody that I've, I've really looked at. He ran 4-4-9 four, four, at 6'2", 245 pounds. Ran 4-4-9. Four, four, Very good time. Very good time. Derek Cooper at Oklahoma is one of the most fun players in the draft, in my opinion, with A hit power and elite speed. He ran 4-4-6. Four, four, the change of direction is just okay. But down the board, this is a fun player to potentially take a shot at. He's not technically sound, but he runs fast and he hits hard. And there, there's something to be said for that. Alan Lucas ran 4-4-7. Four, four, right outside linebacker. I really, really, really like the look of Keegan McCree. 21 years old out of Washington State, in my opinion, is the best linebacker out of Washington State in this class. The middle linebacker, Dalton Stallings, projected to go number one overall. Well, I think Keegan McCree is better. Has A pursuit, A tackle, B block shedding, and has big potential for other attributes to be great too. B awareness, A to C man, A to C zone, A to C play rec, A to C catching, A to C hit power. Physically, Ran 4, 6, 7. Does have a lead change of direction, but with great speed. He has great speed. So do I take a lot of stock at that 4, 6, 7 if I think he's going to play faster? Maybe. Maybe. At corner, uh, Sean Hawthorne, what did you run? 4, 4, 3. See, he has great speed and ran 4, 4, 3. Compared to Daniel Brinkley, who has good speed, who ran 4-4-1. You guys got to remember, we got to take a look at this after the draft to confirm. Brinkley ran faster, but has worse speed ratings than the other corner. It's interesting. It's really interesting. Fastest corner is Kentrell Wall, ran 4-3-4. Four, four. Looks like a good player. Looks like a really good player. And now, maybe the most interesting corner in this draft to me is Charles Love. Has B man coverage, B press, C zone coverage. That's pretty good. He's 23 years old as well, but he's six foot four. Did run slow, 4-5-3, but has the same speed rating as Daniel Brinkley, which is good. So I don't know. Free safety. I wasn't really too impressed with the safeties. I didn't think any of them looked all that good, to be honest. 4-4-5 four, four, is pretty fast for a safety, especially. What did Alfonso Carey run? 4-4-6, four, four, also pretty good. And then strong safety. I wasn't really too interested in any of these guys, except Malcolm Chambers had a draft storyline that said he won like defensive player of the year or something. Ran 448 real fast with B, block shed, B, play rec, A to C man coverage, C zone coverage. He's interesting, but probably not someone I would take in round one. And then I have a kicker watched. Wyatt Anthony, A awareness, ends up with elite kick power. Don't let me forget about the kicker, Wyatt Anthony. This is a player worth drafting, or at least signing. Elite kick power with B kick accuracy, that's very good. That's very good. And then punter, I know we just brought back the Scottish Hammer, but Brock Cook from Penn State as B kick accuracy, ends up with great kick power, is the fastest punter in the draft, is the strongest punter in the draft. Four reps of 225, pretty sick. I couldn't get even one up. It's 225 pounds is a lot. Um, especially I got long arms. Inhibits my ability to bench. Also lack of muscle probably contributing as well. Oh, I didn't bring back Gillen. That's right. That's right. So maybe I just do need to draft a punter or sign a punter. In free agency. Okay. Okay. We have some options. 
We did bring back Julian Love on a short-term deal. Derwin James is at the top of the board here with significant interest in the Giants. And who's this? Huge impact. Huge interest, I should say. Nobody's interested. Odell Beckham Jr. wants huge money as a 30-year-old receiver to return to the Giants. Hmm. That's interesting. Mike Gesicki's here. The other Josh Allen. Calvin Ridley. Elton Jenkins. Elton Jenkins has interest. You want to upgrade at guard? I mean, that's it. That's it right there. Sterling Shepard is back in here. Now, the Packers did use Sterling Shepard to get to the Super Bowl. They just got crushed. Boo Boo Smith is here. Jabril Peppers could be brought back. Should I be on Clowney? There are some good players in here. Eric McCoy. Eric McCoy is actually going to be my first offer of this free agent period. Only 26 years old with pretty big interest in coming to the Giants. I'm going to give him a four-year offer and hopefully bring in Eric McCoy. Currently number one on him. I will offer on Odell Beckham Jr. The storyline is just too good. Uh, probably wouldn't do a four-year deal and probably wouldn't do this amount of money either. Because he has so much interest, I'm going to absolutely lowball him. But it's still pretty good money. He's just not super interested. However, no one, no one is offered on him. So I might just leave that there. It's a big contract. It's a really big contract, but it's still... Like, no one's paying 30-year-old Odell coming off an ACL $20 million per year. No one's going to do that. Jordan Hicks, I will give a one-year deal. We need more depth at the position, and uh, why not? Why not get Jordan Hicks? Outside linebacker, there's not much there. Don't really have an interest in Marcus Davenport. Malik McDowell is actually interesting, but... I think we're going to sign Maurice Hurst, or at least offer him. Uh, depth is important. He's actually, like, way too expensive, but does have big interests, so I'm going to take the money down and see if he wants to sign, because depth is pretty important. Could bring Will Hernandez back. Probably going to avoid that. I'll keep the offer on uh, Eric McCoy, and those are our five offers. So we have Odell, Eric McCoy, Deshaun Elliott, Jordan Hicks, and Maurice Hurst. Let's evaluate offers. And we have signed Jordan Hicks, the first player acquired in the rebuild is Jordan Hicks in the offseason. Odell's still here. Still number one in Eric McCoy. The Jags are potential players in the Deshaun Elliott sweepstakes now. Eight teams in the hunt. Could give him a little bit more money. I probably wouldn't go too much over that, though. We're back to five active negotiations. Evaluate offers. And two players are gone. It's because we have signed another. A big upgrade to our offensive line is center Eric McCoy. The chat informed me that he did end up signing a contract extension in real life, which is one of the reasons I avoided Derwin James, but I had already offered him and um, alternate reality. So you want to bring in a scheme fit that's going to be better for the offense, help Saquon Barkley, help Tyrod Taylor or whoever our quarterback ends up being. Eric McCoy is a very, very solid addition. 
He's getting four years, 18 mil salary, 16 mil bonus. And I just think this is a really, really big pickup. Probably one of the more underrated guys that we could have acquired. All right, cool. Free agency too. I, I was disconnected from the EA servers uh, momentarily, but I did want to point out how big of an addition I believe Eric McCoy is to our team. 26 years old, does have star development. 81 overall, does fit the scheme as I mentioned. But just getting this guy in the middle of the offensive line does have the leader personality. I don't know what that impacts. But is the eighth highest rated center in the league, as you can tell from the top left. Obviously, the morale is playing down just slightly. But strength at a pretty good spot. Run block above 80. Pass block above 80. I think he's a really, really good addition to our team. Quick update. Still pursuing Odell. Still have the only offer on him and Maurice Hurst. Anthony Ferkser, the Red Rifle, Andy Dalton in there as well. And uh, hopefully one of those guys ends up signing. Odell still out there. The Red Rifle still out there. But we did sign Maurice Hurst and Anthony Ferkser. They're only one-year deals. So I'm really not too concerned with it. Just getting a little bit more depth on the team is kind of where we're uh, we're focused. And getting a Harvard man in Anthony Ferkser, not a bad idea. And uh, we'll keep pursuing Odell and Andy Dalton. And both still remain unsigned. Quick look at the top 100 where the top free agents are headed. Duran James will now be a rival. Headed to Philadelphia. Scary Terry going to team up with Justin Fields in Chicago. Brady has signed back with the Patriots. Unbelievable. Tom Brady back to the Pats. Mike Gesicki going to Green Bay, but keep in mind, no Aaron Rodgers. Over 7,000 people live. Appreciate you guys, by the way. Josh Allen to Atlanta, the edge rusher. Terrell, or excuse me, Tremaine Edmonds. To the Eagles as well. Man, the Eagles. Relax. Relax. Elton Jenkins goes to the Jags. Dawson Knox also going to the Bears. Javon Hargrave to Chicago. Okay, they're spending money. Trayvon Mullen loves the Bay Area going to the Niners. Sterling Shepard to Seattle. Davenport to the Texans. Boo Boo Smith goes to the Packers. Jabril Peppers to the Eagles. Dude, what is happening? What is happening? Where are the Eagles getting all this money? Genevieve Clowney back to the Texans. Pollard to the Dolphins. McCole Hardman to the Texans. JC Treader to the Cowboys. Akeem Hicks to the Cowboys. Robert Tunyon trading teams in division to the Vikings. Big Bob. Big Bob Tunyon. Sean Murphy bunting to the Cardinals. He kind of feels like he would be a Cardinal. Jack Conklin to the Ravens. All right, some very interesting signings in here. Nate Davis to the Texans. Texans seem like they had a pretty good free agency. Let's see here. Targeted. William Golston and Andy Dalton. Odell is gone. And Morgan Fox is gone. And that's because they are on... The Giants. Welcome back, Odell Beckham Jr. Back with the Giants. And he won't be wearing that number seven for long. It, it just, it's right. Welcome back. Odell Beckham Jr. He's hinted at it a little bit in real life. But here, we've made it happen. Some of the best numbers you've ever seen from a young receiver were by Odell Beckham Jr. early in his career with the Giants. I believe he was the fastest receiver to like X amount of catches and yards and touchdowns. Early on, Odell was unbelievable. And keep in mind these 2014 numbers, 91 catches for 1,300 yards and 12 touchdowns. That was not even over a full season, by the way. That was not over a full season. Odell struggled with injury earlier on, or early on in his career. And um, I mean, obviously those haven't really fully gone away, 
But these numbers in year one, 1,300 yards, 12 touchdowns on 91 catches, came in just 11 starts and 12 games played total. Led the league in yards receiving per game as a rookie with 108.8. Ooh, Nick Duvall is projected to go to us at 31. But it is time. Nearly 8,000 people live for the NFL Draft 2023. And we are officially underway. The Seahawks are picking number one overall. We don't pick until the third pick. And will it end up being the inside linebacker Dalton Stallings from Washington State? There's a high probability of that. And we will see. The pick is in. And it is Dalton Stallings. Seattle goes with a middle linebacker at number one. A very unorthodox selection, if I do say so myself. Uh, didn't really like what we saw of him, but he does end up being the number one overall guy. And we'll see if Seattle ends up regretting that. Or maybe he ends up being a beast. All it takes is, uh, is you know, a good development trait. He looked like a decent athlete, nothing exceptional. And we'll go to the Texans pick at number two. It is Avery Atkinson, an edge rusher out of Oklahoma. He looked like a pretty good athlete. I'm not going to lie. He was definitely not bad. Someone I was impressed with when we checked him out. Just was never going to be somebody that was in play for us and ends up going obviously high and out of our range. Uh, has a finesse moves, pretty lethal off the edge. Not really uh, much of like a top tier athlete, but definitely very, very good. And I think what you can also say about Avery Atkinson is he's well balanced. Like he has B power moves. I want to say with a finesse moves, like he's definitely pretty good. But that brings us to our pick at number three. Overall, and we have some options. We have some options. Edward Sloan, quarterback out of Miami, is available. Great throw power. Decent enough athlete. Skills are pretty good. Scrambler archetype is interesting for someone that's six foot five. I think that just means more about his short accuracy and throw under pressure uh, than everything else. Of course... There are a number of different uh, guys in the chat comments that want Daniel Brinkley. I don't believe that he's a generational player is what it comes down to. I don't. He does have a man and a zone. All well and good. Did run quite fast at the combine. I just see here's the difference between generational and just good. It's easy to say just look at him. I've done so many drafts. I think he's going to be one of the high tier generation or generated players. Not generational, but high tier generated. So I think he's likely to be in the 78 to 81 range. And I if I had to guess, I would put him at star development from what I've seen. He's not generational. If he, if he's an 84 overall generational corner, then I completely misread it. But with his athleticism, I don't think he's generational. I think he is very good. I think he could definitely be in the 80s. And I think the player is really good. It's just a matter of, do we value Daniel Brinkley a third corner over our potential future at the most important position, which is quarterback, which maybe would mean Cody Bailey. He is also 23 years old, which would steer me away from that, just being honest. And for those reasons, I'm going to at least entertain picking up the phone, trading down. We're going to review some offers for this pick. Of course, in 2023, Bears are offering me a first next year and a second. What's the best offer here? Vikings offering me the number 10 pick. 
We could trade in division. Washington says, hey, we want to trade up two spots. We will give you a third round pick next year and a fourth round pick this year. And this is in a class where I really have some interesting players in the mid rounds. That's an intriguing offer. Lions offering their first next year. Jags offering a first next year. The Eagles offering me two first round picks, both this year. And look at this with the Dolphins, with the, with the shot clock. Offering me the number four overall pick, plus a third this year, plus a seventh. That is interesting. The Jets offering me the number seven pick, a third and a fourth this year. Although I think we're going to move down one spot only, pick up a third round pick in the process. The Dolphins are officially on the clock. We have moved down one spot. The Dolphins have essentially traded up in front of the Commanders, despite having a pick ahead of them. If you expect Washington to move up, which they tried to, is this for a quarterback? Is it for a corner? In Daniel Brinkley. Who is the pick? We shall resume and find out. And if it is Daniel Brinkley, do I want him going to the Commanders? Because he's going to be a very good corner. It's not! It's a defensive tackle! The Dolphins have taken Damian Davis. The defensive tackle out of Georgia. And he's a good player. But he's not a quarterback. He's not Daniel Brinkley. The Dolphins have moved up to beef up the defensive line. And, I mean, you talk about Jordan Davis the year prior. Jalen Carter this year. Is Damian Davis just a product of playing around other talented players? Or is he truly a difference maker on the defensive line? That'll be the question that we end up answering in recent or future seasons. Is Damian Davis worth the number three overall pick? Dolphins traded a third round pick to do it. And we are back on the clock at number four. Of course, got to at least entertain the thought of trading down. Seeing what's out there. The Dolphins, again, have picked up the phone. <laughs> the Dolphins will give us the number six overall pick, plus a three and a five. The Dolphins, with two first-round picks in this class, looking, looking to get back-to-back -back first round picks. Jags still offering that first rounder next year, as are the Lions, Patriots. The Commanders, they're like, hey, please. Please, dude, can we can we have it? <laughs> no, they can't. Philadelphia is still offering multiple first-round picks. I don't want to move down that much. We're going to go ahead and accept this offer from Miami. It's just too good of an offer to trade or to turn down. And we shall see what they're looking to do at number four so we move down two spots and we'll see what the pick is it's a quarterback it is edward sloan out of miami the dolphins got their guy keeping the miami quarterback in miami the first qb off the board stays not only in the same state but the same city you know, you'd think they would be trading up for the quarterback the first time. But no, they went a different direction. They took Damian Davis. But had to jump up ahead of the commanders in order to get maybe their franchise quarterback. And this is a different style. Yes, they have Tua Tungo Vailoa. Arguably not their franchise guy. Sloan has a bigger arm, can stretch the field, and still has the ability to hit those short throws the same way that Tua's been able to do sometimes as well. So, 
Is Edward Sloan the future for the Dolphins? Well, he better be because they traded up quite a bit to get him. And that puts the Commanders on the clock at number five. One pick ahead of us. And this could be very interesting. If I had to bet, I think this is Daniel Brinkley. I think Daniel Brinkley is headed to the Commanders. That would be my bet. Will it come true? And it is. Daniel Brinkley to the Commanders at number five in the draft. He is the best player in the draft. We turned him down multiple times. And now we'll have to play him twice a year for our division rival, Washington Commanders. I mean, they needed the position. They needed the position and they got it. Daniel Brinkley, welcome to the NFC East. What a storyline in this division. And we are on the clock at number six. And the reason we avoided taking a corner on multiple occasions is because we are addressing a different position, a more valuable position. And that's going to be the biggest arm in this class, elite throw power, James Shaw. No, nah, it's not. It's going to be, of course, the 21-year-old quarterback out of Auburn, Cody Bailey. And what this comes down to is 21 years old. So even if he has normal development, even if he does, he's only 21 years old. He will progress as fast as a 23-year-old quarterback with star dev. I think 21 years old was a, was a big factor in this move. Beautiful spiral on all of his passes. Pressure doesn't phase him because he doesn't know it's there. That's some classic Daniel Jones. But with a quick release, plays well with uh, within and outside of the pocket. And then look at his accuracies, man. B deep, A medium, A short, A throw under pressure. Great throw power. With all those things being said, there is still immense risk with this player. F stamina. F injury. Does Cody Bailey have the the health issues that will stop him from being successful? Well, we'll find out. The last time the Giants took a quarterback at number six, it was Daniel Jones. This time, it's Cody Bailey. And he does indeed have normal development. But he is 21 years old. We knew this was a possibility. And he is looking to be our franchise quarterback. 92 throw power. 81 speed. 83 acceleration and agility. 82 change of direction. And with a good season... He would obviously go up even more in development trait. But again, 21 years old, he will progress as quickly as a 23-year-old quarterback with star development. This was the right pick for our organization. He was a top five talent in the draft and hopefully is a difference maker for this franchise. We have taken potentially our quarterback of the future, Cody Bailey. Welcome to the Giants. Jets on the clock at number seven. Let's see which direction they go. Probably not going to be a quarterback. 
I don't actually know which direction they would go. It is a quarterback. Oh my goodness. Why are the Jets going quarterback here? It's Bryce Fry out of Nebraska. I suppose the Zach Wilson era potentially coming to an end. Zach Wilson, by the way, is a 75 overall with the QB of the future player tag. Team is unlikely to draft a replacement for this player. Well, they just did. Zach Wilson, he is only a 75 overall. Does have star dev. But they have taken Bryce Fry. And we'll, uh, we'll see in time if that ends up being the right decision. Steelers are up next at number eight. And where do the Steelers go? We pick at number 31. I'm not sure if I would consider trading up as Ed Griffin out of Tulane is headed to Pittsburgh. One of the top pass rushers in this class, Ed Griffin, is pretty good. One of the better athletes at the position as well. Can definitely fly off the edge. You see him taking down the first quarterback off the board, Edward Sloan. And uh, that is a draftable right tackle prospect as well. Ed Griffin can play. Battle of the Eds. <laughs> and uh, Miami won this game, but Ed Griffin got some licks in. Top 10 pick out of Tulane. Colts at number nine. Go with a quarterback, and it is QB season inside the top 10 of this draft. James Shaw out of Memphis. One of the biggest arms in this class. Well, guess what? He's headed to Indianapolis. Do they have their quarterback of the future? They might. He's got a big time arm. And when you look at the Indianapolis Colts roster right now, they're pretty strong top to bottom. The one thing they're missing is quarterback. They have Matt Ryan. He's 38 years old. 74 overall. After that, it's Texas legend, Hook'em Horn, Sam Ellinger, and then Jack Cohn. Cohen. Jack, how do I not remember how to say his name? Anyway, doesn't matter. Not good. James Shaw could be better. Vikings at number 10. Go with Mike Parrish, a receiver out of the Ohio State University. He is maybe the fastest receiver in this class. Was dominant at Ohio State. Put up big time numbers. Look at Brutus getting down. Ooh. <laughs> Mike Parrish found the end zone early and often for Ohio State here at Nebraska. Had a huge game. Multiple touchdowns. Bomb from CJ Stroud over the top. Parrish, end zone machine. En route to a huge win over the Cornhuskers. No surprise there. Parrish can fly. And he's headed up north to Minnesota. Mike Parrish is your 10th pick of the draft. Patriots, who just brought back Tom Brady with the most Patriots pick of all time taking an athletic DB with size. Now, they usually like to do it in round two, but Sean Hawthorne is the 11th pick in the draft. Played college football at Colorado, and it's just a good player. Really good athlete. We expect him to be a little bit faster than Daniel Brinkley. Uh, maybe not quite as good in coverage, especially not in man coverage, but his own skills are among the best in the draft. He is definitely a really good player and I think worthy of this selection. He's quite good. He is quite good. Bears at number 12. Take Eddie Hemsley, an outside linebacker out of Texas Tech. He is a pass rush type. And early on in the year, he was projected to be one of the top guys off the board. You remember the early mocks. I think it was mock draft two maybe. 
Eddie Hemsley was projected to be the number three overall pick to this Giants team. Ends up sliding out of the top 10 and is the 12th overall pick, but he's a pretty good player. And obviously the Bears looking for that Khalil Mack replacement. End up taking Eddie Hemsley. Seahawks back on the clock at 13. Took an inside linebacker. Number one overall. This is their second pick. And it is a guard, Logan Richardson, off the board. Maybe the top left guard in this class. Of course, see him blocking there for potential first round pick, Eli Gilmore, number 75. And the Seahawks are trying to upgrade their offensive line. Eagles now on the clock with the 14th pick. They tried to trade this to us. They end up keeping it. And they end up taking Monty Rankin out of Mizzou. He is more of a defensive tackle, if I had to say. And uh, put on a clinic here against West Virginia. Typical Howie Roseman pick, to be honest. Just another big defensive lineman that they can play all over. You know, kind of think uh, Javon Hargrave with him. He, he's an interesting player, for sure. Falcons at number 15. Had a better season than we expected. And they end up going Andrew Charles. We saw his Miami teammate go top 10. Well, this was the guy that was protecting him. Maybe the best tackle in the class is number 54, the right tackle, Andrew Charles from Miami. Uh, Caleb McGarry obviously didn't really work out for the Falcons. Well, they're taking another swing at a tackle here in round one by the name of Andrew Charles. Titans at number 16. Go with Greg Pinkston, left guard from Ohio State. We see back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back offensive linemen uh, and this was the last one that, in my opinion, was worth taking in the first round. Greg Pinkston is a powerful interior offensive lineman. See him making a big-time play there. He is uh, he's very good. I think Greg Pinkston is, is worth the pick here for Tennessee. And, of course, they're very power run-oriented. And this is going to help make Derrick Henry's job a whole lot easier. Ravens at number 17. Go with Tony Morris. We're seeing offensive and defensive linemen fly off the board. Tony Morris from UCLA uh, is another like defensive lineman, basically. Definitely a good player. And Baltimore also beefing up the D-line. Lions at number 18. Go Kentrell Wall. Corner out of Illinois. Kentrell Wall is a really solid athlete. And of course, you know, playing at a small time school, you can maybe cast a little bit of a doubt on whether he can actually, you know, play up to the next level as we see a beautiful ball in there from Ed Sloan, top 10 pick of this draft. Wall with tight coverage, just maybe lacking the ball skills to really make a play there. Good speed though, good time playmaker, more of a zone corner than anything. But that's your Amani Oruwarie replacement if you're the Lions. Yeah, different Cantrell from Illinois. What's up, Kenny? Chargers at 19 go Malcolm Chambers out of West Virginia. Now, we were looking at the draft storylines, the news. Malcolm Chambers, I believe, was either Defensive Player of the Year or DB of the Year uh, in college football this past season. Probably worth a first-round pick as well. And the Chargers, who lost Derwin James, now look for another versatile safety in their replacement first round pick, Malcolm Chambers. And that name, Malcolm Chambers, kind of a fun combination of former Chargers. Jags at 20, go with Manny Thomas from Mississippi State. They lost Josh Allen. Manny Thomas is a bit of a different type of player, but another defensive lineman in there. Texans go Nick Spencer out of Wisconsin. The run on defensive linemen continues. Seeing a lot of them here in the middle of this first round. Cardinals at 22 go Joe Fuller. Man, he sure looks a lot like Nick Spencer. Sure does. Right tackle out of Clemson. Some protection for Kyler Murray. Panthers with Pat Burr. Quarterback from Purdue. It's been a long time since we've seen a quarterback go off the board. 
And Pat Burr is headed to Carolina. Your potential Baker Mayfield replacement. Definitely your Sam Darnold replacement. A pretty good game here against uh, Notre Dame. Yeah, Pat Burr. Joe Burr. <laughs> Pat can make some plays. Cowboys at 24. The division rival. Wow. Go Emmett Trap. Interesting story about Emmett Trap. Is he, you can't see it here, but was benched by LSU down the stretch. He's a 5'11 corner, a little bit undersized. Definitely a position of need for the Cowboys, but is Emmett Trap the right selection? As there goes a fan favorite already, it's Doug Hudick. Doug is off the board, headed to the Raiders. I don't know if I like the combination of Hugh Dick in Las Vegas. I feel like that could be a disaster waiting to happen. We shall see. Bengals at 26. Go with Freddie Samuels out of Oklahoma State and the Eagles once again on the board. Go with Henry Jackson, a running back out of Georgia. This is the first running back we've seen go off the board here. It is Henry Jackson. Can definitely make some plays. Was a big-time player, big-time reason why Georgia would pull away with this win against Florida here. Had well over 100 yards rushing. He was a dynamic playmaker, and now we're going to have to face him twice per year. Number one running back in the class is now in the same division. Bucks at 28. Go with Terrell Merritt. Was in that same game. Keep him in state out of Florida. Going from Gainesville to Tampa. The Bills at 29 go with Jared Middleton out of Mississippi State. And the Lions, the last pick before us, pick at number 30. And they go with the running back, Eli Gilmore. Rashad Reese vibes, anyone? You get a receiving back. Sure reminds me of Rashad Reese. Eli Gilmore. Headed to Detroit. Could be a very good combination. Very good combination with DeAndre Swift. And we are on the clock. At 31, there are some options. The chat seems to really want the tight end Nick Duvall. Dontrell Cobb is on the board too. And uh, now that we've made him a focus player, we can check out just how good he is. Does have B block shed, C pursuit, B tackle. We know he's a very, very good athlete. Ran 4.45 at his pro day. The skills are very good. The skills are very good. Will Dontrell Cobb be available? Will Nick Duvall be available? You're kind of playing a very dangerous game of one versus the other here. Six foot four is a great receiver. Not much of a short route runner, but he's a big time deep threat. And will at least for the time being be passed up in favor of the Notre Dame linebacker, Dontrell Cobb. Six foot two, 245 pounds out of Notre Dame. Dontrell Cobb can play. It's rare to see someone at 245 pounds with elite speed like this. Elite coverability. Welcome to the Giants. 90 speed, 90 acceleration for Dontrell Cobb. 81 agility, 74 change of direction isn't amazing, of course. But 90-90 for speed and excel. He can absolutely fly. Does have B hit power as well. Change of direction is maybe a little bit concerning. And I want to remind all of you guys who are booing this pick. I want to remind you that everyone booed the Braxton Turner pick in Lions franchise. And he ended up being a superstar X Factor player. After being a normal pick during the draft. 
Keep that in mind. 90-90. Chiefs at 32. Go with Amari Bozeman. Free safety out of Michigan State to be the last pick of round one. Amari Bozeman, safety out of Michigan State. And here we are. You know what? I'm going to call up Seattle about this. They do have Noah Fant, so you'd wonder if they would take a tight end here. You wonder if they'd consider it. But it really shouldn't cost too much to move up here if we swap second round picks and give them maybe one of our sevenths. That does get it done. Trade accepted, and we are on the clock. First pick of the second round, and it is Duval season. Nick Duval. Elite speed at tight end, six foot four, 240 pounds out of Stanford. A catching traffic, a catching. He is a deep threat, and he is the first pick of round two. 87 speed, 87 acceleration. Change of direction is pretty good as well. Strength really isn't bad. And he is looking to be worth the selection already. Elite athleticism. He can stretch the field, and he can block. A to B run block finesse. A pass block. A catch in traffic. A catching. B deep route running. He is a deep threat. Keep that in mind. He stretches the field. He's not going to be the best chain mover, but he is a mismatch. That's for sure. That's what you get with Nick Duvall. Numbers will eventually be changed. Texans go George Cartwright. Seahawks take Keegan McCree, the linebacker out of Washington State, and they have doubled up on Washington State linebackers in this draft. Keegan McCree was one of my favorite players in this draft class. I thought he could be a big-time playmaker, but he ends up going off the board here at number 30, what is that? 35 overall. It's two Washington State linebackers for the Seattle Seahawks. Zach Davis out of Vandy. Hugh Scott out of Auburn to the Colts. Trevor Warner, the right tackle out of Stanford, goes to the Dolphins. Sidney Stevenson, safety out of Boise State to the Jets. Sidney Stewart, Georgia defensive tackles off the board. There goes the six foot four corner Charles Love. To the Colts, Benji Stewart, the defensive tackle out of Louisville, ends up going. Thomas Whiteside to the Pats. Bears take receiver Nate Vickers out of Iowa. And there goes the fan favorite, Jerry Bonds. Corner out of Florida. Not Barry Bonds, but Jerry. And there goes Chris Kennard. He does not make it to the middle of the second round. The Oregon State tight end is headed to the Saints. He was arguably the best tight end in this class. And he is no longer available. A degenerative knee issue has pushed him dra down draft boards. He does end up going a little bit higher than expected, though. And he is teaming up with a group of pretty good up-and-coming receivers down there in New Orleans. Could be just what they need on offense. Falcons at 15. Go with Dwayne Woodson, the free safety at Alabama. The Titans. Go with Demarcus Lyons, the tackle at a UCF. And one pick before us, the Ravens. Take Alfonso Carey, the free safety out of NC State. We are back on the clock midway through the second round and we have some options the heisman winner cecil mcfadden is available but that is not going to be our pick we're going with larry larry smith five foot ten 191 receiver out of usf c catching traffic b catching b deep route running b release and he might just be the fastest player in this class 
elite acceleration, elite speed, ran 4-2-4 at his pro day. And his skills are good. Not much of a short route runner, not much of a route runner in general, but could be a big time player for us. Welcome to the Giants. Arguably the biggest deep threat, the most explosive playmaker in this draft, it's Larry Smith. 98 speed, 90 jumping, 92 change of direction, 91 agility, 94 acceleration. Larry Smith can absolutely fly. And he, he showed it off against Florida State. He made some big time plays. And that is why he ends up being a second round pick. And that speed, that plays at any level. Welcome to the Giants. Back-to-back -back second round receivers uh, for the Giants. Wondell Robinson last year. Larry Smith this year. Very different type of players. Very different types. Likenesses are always changed after the draft, by the way. Chargers go Stephen Mann out of Florida State. David Crowder out of LSU to the Jags. Browns go Enrique Callahan. Chris Baxter running back off the board from Buffalo to the Cardinals. There goes the Heisman winner, though, Cecil McFadden. He's headed to the Panthers. Cowboys take Elijah Miles. Enrique Kaysen, top left tackle, ends up going off the board to the Raiders here. Back-to-back -back offensive lineman for them, Rayshon Simmons. Mark Whitlock, very good tight end, is headed to the Eagles. They've had a good draft. There goes Kirk Lasley out of Iowa State. Spencer Roth, more of a linebacker, in my opinion, out of Virginia Tech. Goes to the Bills. Rams go Terrell Minner out of Clemson. Packers take Brett Norwood, a corner out of Auburn. Was a potential round one guy. And there goes Nick Brewer, quarterback out of Old Dominion. Now into the third round. There goes David Crawford. Just before we could take him. Texans, one pick before us, go Jonathan Myers out of Northwestern. And we are back on the clock. Lonnie McDowell is available. I know we don't have a huge need at defensive tackle right now, but he offers us something we don't have. So that's interesting. Definitely some options for us here. Akeel Edmonds is available. This is someone that we looked at. Does have elite speed, elite change of direction, great cover skills. Block shedding is just low. Is a little bit small. Safeties, wasn't overly impressed. Corner, not overly impressed. Linebacker, still some good options in there. And yeah, I think it's I think it's gonna end up I think it's gonna be a linebacker. We're gonna go with Keel Edmonds. Only five foot eleven, but twenty-one years old out of UCF. And other than block shedding, the player looks really good. Yeah, probably not a candidate to play safety, but with I mean, depending on what those cover skills, like maybe. Definitely possible. He's gonna be our pick here. Does have hidden dev. 86 speed, 89 acceleration, 87 agility. Does have hidden development as well. Akeel Edmonds out of UCF. Welcome to Big Blue. He can absolutely fly. 86 speed, pretty good for someone that's 231 pounds. And will be an upgrade for us at linebacker. And we're getting good depth. We brought in Jordan Hicks as a mentor. And now Akeel Edmonds, Dontrell Cobb, new additions to this team as well. Despite, unfortunately, losing out on David Crawford, who uh, obviously had pretty big potential. Lonnie McDowell goes with the next pick to the Niners. The Colts take Daniel Bibbs, and we are back on the clock. We're getting some offers, though. Uh, the Raiders are offering us a second-round pick. Packers don't have Jordan Love. Let's take the Raiders pick, though. We're going to trade down a third for a second next year. Yeah, I, I do know Rodgers retired. 
The Bucks are always good, though. Khalid Wall out of Texas. There goes BJ Finch. And there goes Shane Flaherty. We don't pick until the top of the fourth round after this. So we're going to have to make this one count. And you know what? I think it's going to be... It's going to be the tight end, Jaden Rhodes. We're going to take a very different style of tight end here. Elite strength and jumping should be a very good blocking tight end. Um, but also, a chain mover. Jaden Rhodes, welcome to the team. 6'6", 247. 82 speed, not too bad. 87 acceleration, 86 agility. I could see him being worthwhile. And I think we will simulate to round four here. And take our pick. Round four, pick three. We are on the clock, and who is available? Derek Cooper is going to be my guy. I know it's another linebacker, but this is a special teams player. Probably. Absolutely elite speed, elite hit power. Could be very good. And we're going to take him. Does have hidden dev. 92 speed. 91 acceleration. And he can absolutely hit. Derek Cooper. Middle of the first round. Or middle of the third round. Fourth round, actually. I'm all over the place. <laughs> Welcome to the Giants. Can absolutely hit. And he's got, I mean, obviously, I don't even know that I've ever seen 92 speed at middle linebacker. So we've gone linebacker, linebacker, linebacker. But those players could eventually become starters for us. Do I take this corner? B tackle, B press. He's zone type. We're going to take a shot. Antoine Short is only 5'9". And he's 24 years old. We do need depth at corner, though. He's definitely fast. Could be good. 93 speed. Kind of all we really know about him right now. And we are into round seven. Our last pick. Still have a ton of favorites on here. But we are going to add a kicker to our draft class. It is Wyatt Anthony out of Nebraska. A awareness. B kick accuracy. And elite kick power. Good speed too. Welcome to the Giants, Wyatt Anthony. 99 kick power and 77 speed. Also, hidden development. Okay. That is interesting. Wyatt Anthony. Yeah, very A short accuracy for a kicker. And that will end our draft. Okay. Very interesting. Cody Bailey haters. He is a 77 overall. 88 short accuracy already, 85 medium, and he's a good athlete. Not bad. Not bad. 73 overall for Dontrell Cobb, 74 for Nick Duvall, 76 for Larry Smith, Akeel Edmonds, and Jaden Rose are both 71. Derek Cooper is a 66. As I said, we drafted him for special teams, 85 hit power. Has a chance to get better. And Wyatt Anthony is a 76. 99 kick power, 79 kick accuracy, 77 speed. I think we have taken a generational kicker. And look at that mullet on him. That's a draft pick. I think we've taken a generational kicker. <laughs> Worth the pick. Yeah, we're going to look in UDFAs. Daniel Brinkley does end up being an 81 overall, as predicted. He has 92 speed, 83 man, 82 zone, 76 press. This is not a generational player, but it is a very good player, as we expected. Let's see his depth trait. Could be superstar X-Factor. Certainly could be. And it's star. After that, Doug Hudick was the highest rated player in the class at 78. Then Cody Bailey at 77. Rayshon Simmons, a running back, 76 overall. And then Larry Smith 
was a top five talent in the draft. We took him in the middle of the second round. Mike Parrish, by the way, 97 overall. There should be 97 speed. Hidden dev as well. Not bad. Keegan McCree was a 76. See, he was he was definitely somebody I liked a lot. 85 speed is pretty good. I thought he was going to be quite good. And he has star development. He also, the kicker is 76 overall as well. Uh, Dalton Stallings is a 75. That's actually higher than I would have expected. And then it's a drop off to the 74s. Chris Kennard does have normal development. So, and only 83 speed. Definitely good player though. Sloan is a 73 overall. Normal development on Sloan. We definitely took the better quarterback of the two. Fry is a 64. Oh my God. Shaw is a 76 though. Also, normal development. He's got a cannon though. 97 throw power. But guys, that is going to do it for the off-season stream. I wish I had more time, but you'll find out about some of these rookies in preseason. That's the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.